اللهم صل على محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Today is 25th August 2009 in Auckland and we are starting session 2 of Laylatul Qadr. The, a very brief wrap up of last session which although it was not for most of you still it was not the first time I had said about it in bits and pieces last year in Laylatul Qadr. But however, the main things that we discussed was Agha Sajid that Laylatul Ghad is not about only one night. And we said, when, if it's going to be on that, that very one night as such, then when, when we are having Laylatul Ghad here, what about the people in America? They are still in the day before us. So what happens to their Laylatul Ghad? So if when it comes to their Laylatul Qadr, we have finished Laylatul Qadr and we are next, it's next day here and we are walking in the, we are in the, in our offices and doing the business. So what is that this Laylatul Qadr, what does that mean when it says, it, it gives a date on 21st or 23rd or 19th or 27th, different nights have been set. And then I quoted the dua of Imam Sajjad when he talks to months of Ramadan how he talks to the months of Ramadan as though it's something living and it has not finished and then we concluded that like any other thing that we have in the past spoke of and said which Quran says وَمَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا إِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنَهُ وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everything which exists in this material world, the source of it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up there. So what we see here in this material universe is a lower version of everything. Everything when, when it comes to a lower version, it comes to the way we see it. For instance, an example, an example, for instance, the people who used to see imams, imam seeing imam in that material body, that material presence of imam, is a lower version of Imam. Reality of Imam is much higher than what people could see. The reality of Imam is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we cannot even imagine it, how, how close they are. So, but when it comes to this material world, they must have a presence here. They will, have, they will eat like anybody else. They will eat, they will sleep, they have children. So, similarly, anything that we see here, it's not only about insan. Even even this, this has got. A, this is a lower version of another reality. This reality of this is in the higher universes, in alam khial, in universe of khial and universe of aql. So this much we spoke about Laylatul Qadr, that the reality of we said also the reality of time is not what we see here. What we see here is material presence of time. Material presence of time is one minute ago does not exist anymore. If you, if you, if you look at one minute ago, there is not, there, that does not, is not here anymore. It's finished. One minute ago is perished. You can never bring that one minute ago back. But time as a whole, it exists. Time as a whole is in the universe of Mad- Barzakh and universe of Ag. It has got a higher reality. Imam alayhi salam when talks in Saifi Sajjadi, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam talks to, to the months of Ramadan, he is talking to that reality of the months of Ramadan. He is talking to the reality of the time. He is not talking to the time which has already finished and passed and perished. Okay, what we want to talk tonight about, we, go, we want to go further. Sajjad, if you had 
difficulties to understand today's talk, you might want to go and listen to it to the first session so that you make a un- better understanding of today. And it also especially understanding of the universes and awalim may helps us to understand what we have said today, what we have said last week, and what we want to say today. What I want to talk about today itself is what is Layl. When we say Laylatul Ghatr, what is the meaning of it? Do you know the meaning of Laylatul Ghatr? Layl is something time. Uh, yes. Which is, I guess, I don't know. It means the night. Yes, you're right. It means the night of Qadr. Laylatul Qadr. Layl means night in Arabic. And Qadr is Qadr, means value. So when we say Laylatul Qadr, are we saying, is it an issue of night? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that this Qur'an, when he says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul ghad, means Qur'an was sent to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at night? Is this what we, we understand from this? Or when it is talk of yom, means day. Yom means day in Qur'an. Is it, it, is that day that in Quran talks about is always, is it always talking about the day that we know as opposed to the night? This is one of those areas that we have to, to make a new understanding of time and day. And night and day. Not saying, saying this, learning this, it doesn't mean now we have been, so, so far we have been making mistake. Lay did not mean night. No, it did mean night, but everything makes a sense only in, 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 in its own context. In the context of what we talk, in the context of the deeper meanings of Laylatul Ghat, Layl is not night. What is Layl? I seek the help of Imam Zaman salam, to enable me to explain we are, so that we understand what Layl is and what Yawm is. So that I can go, inshallah, next week to the, to the main topic of what Laylatul Ghat could be. See, in Quran we have in Surah Tariq number 2, it says, Yawm Tubla Sarair. Yawm Tubla Sarair means the, a day which Sarair means what is inside us. What is inside the heart? Means the, the bottom of our wujud. Yawm Tubla Sarail means the day which our, wujud, our inside comes out. What, what, not inside, of physical inside. That is, whatever we have kept so far in our heart, no one else knows about it. When it comes to Qiyamah, that's... Yawm Tubla Sarail is one of the names of Qiyamah. It's a day that... Things get revealed, they, they become zahir, there is no batin anymore. So yom, pay attention to the meaning of yom here. Yom, yom sarair, that very day that the batin of us comes to zahir. People, other people can see it. It has been in batin up to that day. Or another verse in Quran there is I haven't written I've not, not written it where, which, where in Quran is but you, might, you all have heard it it says means every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a different appearance in, different, in a different shan that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all every Every time, every second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a new display, if you like, in a new manifestation. Can you take here the meaning of yom as day? Does that mean that every day that the night finishes, next day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a new manifestation? Is it like, if you take it the way we knew about the meaning of yom, the meaning of this would be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every day, starts a new manifestation. He shows himself in a different way. De- definitely this does not, does not match with the, 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 the day, the way we, we knew it before. Let me give you 
Do you remember, I want to refer you to some of those talks we have had in the past that about different awalim. How was it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the big, I mean, in, in, there is a status for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before any creation that He makes manifestation. And manifestation of Allah creates lower awalim. Do you all remember that? That Allah, I don't know if you have been there or not, Sajid. Yes, I have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have, we said, there are different status for Allah. It is not, this is not issue of time. There are different status of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an status whereby he, even in that status there is no even sifat, attribute, nothing for Allah. When we say nothing, not that Allah does not have it, but it's not separate. It's with, within, it's with Allah itself. You cannot separate in that level. And that, that is the level which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called not Allah. Allah is referred to as Hova. You remember we spoke about it? Hova is an status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is a name. Remember, when we, whenever we say Allah, Sajid, when you, say, when you refer to me, when you say Sayyid, you are referring to me as a name so that people would understand. If you go home and say, to your wife, you talk about me, you say Sayyid Bassam, you have given a name so that your wife knows who you're talking about. But when it goes, if, if you say U, in Farsi we say U, right? Hova means U, you're referring. Basically when you refer to anyone even, when you say U, you are not referring to any of his attributes. You are referring to a level of that person is, which is quite unknown. Which we usually which usually we do not say U to anyone as such, unless we do not know him. You come here, and you see a new person, you do not get to know the name, you do not get to know his attributes, what, he, what does he think like, what uh, attributes does he have, is he, is he khosh akhlaq, is he bad akhlaq, you know nothing about him. When you finish and go, whenever you want to talk about him, you, you refer to him as U, you say Hoba in Arabic. That is a level that you do not know anything about that person. Similarly, this was only an example to understand. In Quran, wherever it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by, referring to, by calling him Hova or who, in that this is referring to a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made any manifestation. He is in qaybul mutlaq, in absolute batin, in absolute qaybat that there is not even... Even his sifat are not there to know him. Even attributes of Allah don't, do not exist separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is in that level. When Allah makes a first manifestation, the first manifestation, do you all remember manifestation? You remember what was manifestation? So Allah makes a lower, a lower version of himself. Manifestation was, I have given examples of, that say, when I'm talking to you now, my talk is the manifestation of my thought. Because you cannot see my thought. The only way I can uh, convey my thought to you is when I talk to you. When I talk to you, I have brought down my thoughts in the level of talk. That is why always people cannot say what, what they exactly think. They always, because it's, it is a lower version. It's, you know, it's limited into words. It's limited by words. Thoughts in the level of thought are so vast, are so uh, free-moving. You, can, you, can, you, you, you realize yourself how you can, you can move your thought here and there, think about different things. But if you come and want to explain that, you cannot. You can, but not exactly what you had in mind. If, so this is the... This is the relationship between the talk, the word, and the thought. Because the word is, has come to a lower version, lower, lower alam, and to the lower level of existence. It, it is a manifestation of my thought, but it is not exactly my thought. You agree? Yeah. That's called manifestation. There are different ways that you can talk about manifestation. There are different ways that you can think of manifestation. As a whole, you can make a um, lot of examples yourself. As a whole, 
creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifestation of Allah. So manifestation is when you put limitations, you bring things to a limitation. As I have said to you, that, that's khalq. When things come to a lower, lower level, they are, they are no more equal. Basically, they, do not, they cannot be exactly the same thing that they have been high there. So, if creation, see this is the, the part that we have to pay attention, that I have not, I have, uh, that's where I am asking Imam Zaman alayhi salam, help me to make this understood. That very manifestation of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which comes to a lower level, whatever it is, I mean we are just imagining, let's say it comes to alam aql, that aql, alam aql, universe of aql is a limited version, has got limitation as opposed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means that all universe of aql, you can say, is, Im, is a, and I would call it, maybe this is not the right word, but I use it but and I explain, imprisoned version. Imprisoned in limitations. There are limitations. See, I mean, why I say imprisoned? Imprisoned, Maybe it does not make a, a good sense in your mind, but when it comes especially to insan, you always say, we, have, we are the manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says himself in Quran, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ I blew from my ruh into him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that, that means there is an entity of Allah, an identity of Allah is with us always. There is an identity of Allah with us. When I say within us, not inside the body, inside with our ruh. Within our ruh, there is an entity of Allah. That, that very wujud, that very existence, that, that is the existence of Allah. That is what I referred to the other night, Latifah Rabbani. Latifah Rabbani was the divine reality. There is a divine reality in us. That divine reality of Allah is imprisoned. That's what I call it. This is my own... Uh, uh, use of word that I say imprisoned. Imprisoned, uh, what I want to say is it is surrounded by all these limitations of, uh, of this material world. It, that divine reality of Allah which is with me is imprisoned by my desires of naps, is imprisoned by my limitations of matter. Otherwise, when it was with Allah, when Allah created that that, that Divine reality had no such limitations. But when it came to earth, when it came and was born through notfe, that notfe is all, all materialistic things in it. It's all, you know that the whole notfe is made of matter. It's all food that we eat. The food that we eat in the body gradually it gets extracted by the process physical process of the body, the best, the best juice of the food, the best, what to say, cream of the food, gradually it becomes a specimen and the, uh, the egg in the body of man and woman. And that is when gradually that divine cre- creation is starting to come to creation. And when at the four, fourth month, when there is ruh and spirit given to that material body, that is where, that is when, that divine, that divine reality of Allah has started its life from there. It starts from that very first day of when the notfe gets the ruh, when it, which is at the months, uh, at the fourth months of its life. So that notfe, which has got the divine reality, it starts to, it starts a life. In Ghosh Saud and comes until it gets delivered to this earth and is gradually is grows from childhood to younghood and to the uh, to the high, uh, older ages, always having that divine reality in it. Okay, people with doing a lot of sins, with they cover that divine reality and it cannot be seen anymore. But there are other people who look after it, they treasure it, they nurture it until it becomes. Dominant and it, it dominates the whole being of that person. So that process, process of from the very top there, manifestation after manifestation, every manifestation 
when, when, when one level of manifestation is come to the second level of manifestation, limitations are becoming more. When it comes to the third level of manifestation, even they become more limitations. And remember that example I had told you before. Example of putting layers of glass, darker or colored layers of glass in a, a, a big source of nur. If you put five, six, seven, whatever layers of glass, gradually that nur at the seventh layer. So we are putting seven glass layers. Shishe, right? And that nur is beaming through one after another. When that nur reaches to the lowest level, to the seventh level, it is a still nur. The, the, the nature of it is not changed. No one can say this is no more light. It is a still light. But this light is so much darkened and less, it will very little intensity. You cannot say, the, you can say it is a still nur, but intensity was it is not the same nur anymore. That is when it has been manifested through different layers. All these layers, you can give the example of these layers or the example of our desires of nafs. Desires of nafs entangles and imprisons that divine reality. One manifestation after another, in fact, is taking the, the highest intensity. Look at that very highest intensity. It, when it comes down, it get, it, it's grabbed into another level of, of that glass. That, that in fact, that very lowering of that nur, it means that it's going into a darkness. Because when it was higher, in that very top level, it was much brighter. It comes lighter. When it comes to the second level, it becomes even lighter. Lighter, not, lighter not means no more nur. Means, lighter means, uh, what was No, darker. In effect, it means zaif ter ahsan, less intense. It becomes less intense, less intensity in every level. That what, less intensity. What does that mean? That means it's going to darkness, more darkness. If you look at the very top, it's so light. When it comes to the seventh layer, or seventieth layer, or seven hundredth layer, it becomes darker and darker. This is the example of wujud. So wujud is in the process of coming into darkness. That is what is called Layl. Why it is Layl? When it was up there, it was all Nur. But when, when, when creation starts in the, in the descending arc, in reality descending arc is only when you are put, things are becoming darker and darker. Darker in the sense of intensity of Wujud. Remember Wujud, in, wherever in Quran talks about Nur, for instance, when he says, Allah nur samawati wal earth, no one would imagine even that Allah is nur like this nur. Is Allah like this nur? It's not possible even to think. What is that nur? That is the nur of wujud. Wujud is nur. How is wujud a nur? Existence is nur. I'll give you an example that you see how you can you can see in, through it. You have to ponder upon. You have to think about it later on. You see, wujud itself is nur. When you when you compare wujud of a nabat of a plant with wujud of an animal, which one has more wujud? Animal has. There is obvious the intensity of wujud of animal is more. How, Sajid? So you, you may ask me why. You just you can tell me. You say it yourself and you acknowledge it yourself. Give me proof. Right? No, it is when looking at the examples by itself make it clear for you. When you look at the difference of animal to a plant and a plant to an to an stone, see how which one of them more hayat life. There's more hayat in animal. When it comes to insan, which one has got more hayat? What is the dif- what is making this dif- the difference of the hayat between them? What is that very thing that makes this difference of Hayat in between all these four? That's right, but in true, it is the very Adrak, the very perception which makes it this difference. If you see, when you look at this, this apparently has much less per- understanding and perception. But if you, because this is matter. 
If you compare this with, with plant, you, we all understand, and we, it's very easy to understand that plant has got more perception and understanding. Yeah? Please note down your question. It's obvious that plant has got some sort of perception from the surrounding. That's why it can take the, uh, the ingredients from the soil and bring it up to the leaves. So there is some perception, a drug and understanding of its surrounding. When it comes to haywan, obviously haywan has much more understanding of surrounding. It has got all the five senses. He can touch, he can taste, he can not, uh, not think in that way, he can imagine, he has got khiyar. So these are all, if you, if you notice, if you knew the background of some of my talks, these, all these asar, all these motions and harakat that these different creatures are doing, it is because of the idrak level that they have. It is because they have got a higher level of understanding and perception. And when you see that, percep- that difference between insan and haywan is much bigger, because insan has got much bigger perception. We have got intellectual idrak. Haywan does not have that. So that is why we can dominate all the animals. Because of the aqh that we have, which we, they don't have it. We all have khiyal, we all have vahm, we all have other five senses. But when it comes to aqh, they do not have it. But when it comes to insan itself, you can see even the, that insan who has got more knowledge and more understanding, he has got even more intensity of hayat, more intensity of wujud. Like, let's say, in material, even in materialistic notion of it, you can see Americans are dominating the whole world because of that much more knowledge they have now. Okay? But that's a different story. That That's not a real knowledge that they're having. That's why they're collapsing. But on material level, at least they have been able to, so far, dominant, dominate the whole world. So the more understanding we find, the more knowledge we attain, we, under, we, we, attain the, we, we acquire more a drug, more ability of doing a drug. Obviously, for instance, what Aristotle as an as an alim. Aristotle, you know, he was an ancient Greek scholar, or imams. We give an example of imams. Imam Masumin alayhi wasallam. They the level of understanding they have, we do not have it. If you don't agree, go see some of the top, some of their duas. See, we don't understand anything of their duas, but obviously we cannot imagine. They have been saying these things to Allah, but they, they did not understand. When Imam alayhi salam says in Munajat Shahbaniyeh, what is that? Who remembers that part that I started on Friday morning, which I never continued? Allahi habli kamal al inqita ilayk wa anir absar qulub na biziyah nazarah ilayk. Imam understand himself what he is saying, but we, do, we we make very little understanding of it. Very little understanding we make. That is because they have more knowledge. More knowledge brings more ability of understanding. So the more ability of understanding, that makes the very difference in wujud. That is the nur of wujud. When we say, Allah nur samawati wal arz, that nur of Allah is the wujud, the existence. Because the, the lesser the intensity of wujud becomes, the lesser the perception is. And you go, it goes up, down to the level of stones and wood and wall they have no understanding almost so going back to that Allah is because has got the Allah has got the highest level of rock and perception and life and wujud and nur so in that level when Allah makes a manifestation brings a creature he makes a manifestation of himself in a lower Real in the lower creation, that is going to more darkness as opposed to Allah Himself. And that, let's say, when the universe of Akh as a whole make a manifestation and the universe of Khial is created, universe of Khial is a darker wujud compared to the universe of Akh. And when it comes to the universe of matter, the universe of matter is even darker than the other Abolim. So that is how Layl make on the, means here. Layl, Laylatul Ghadr means a Layl, a descending arc 
in the descending creation that Allah was making the creation that is layla that is night as opposed to yawm so descending ark means layla and ascending ark means yawm yawm is when everything starts in ascending on anything which goes let's say a, a, a seed when you plant a seed you put an orange seed under the earth that orange seed starts in its yawm kullu yawmun huwa fi shan every day every see here put aside the issue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when this was Quran says in Quran says kullu yawmun huwa fi shan is about Allah look look how the a seed of an orange has got the similar thing in it. That means every second that seed is making a new thing, bringing something from in, in bottom of it, bringing to Zahir. Because all those trees, Sajid, you know that in, in a seed, there is an orange tree, but we don't see it. That is in bottom of it, or that is in Alam al-ilm of it, or it is in potentiality, it's, it's just istidad and quwwah. That istidad and quwwah, when it starts to come out to the wujud, to the zuhur outside al that means it is every, every new thing it makes is a new yom, is one new day. So day is not as opposed to night. Yom is, they call it in Arabic, they say zarf, zuhur ashya. Zarf zuhur means the container, not material container. A container that things can, can become mawjood. Because that, for instance, that orange tree as a tree inside the seed is not mawjood anymore at this point. But when it grows, comes out of the earth, gradually it's coming to wujud. That is yom for that. That those... Uh, those intervals of every new creation in, which comes out of from the earth, from that seed, is a yom for that. So even for the seed, you can see, kulla yoman huwafi shan. Every day, there is, that tree is in a different shape, is in a different form, is in a di- different uh, manifestation of its wujud. So when we are coming, when the creation is coming into in the in Ghosn Nuzul coming down to Wujud until it reaches to uh, we say plateau. Plateau means this is my word. Uh, it's not uh, really a real word for this. Plateau or zero level, zero level of Wujud. Zero level of Wujud for uh, an orange tree is that the very potentiality inside that seed is a zero level because it has not started this Wujud. See. Look at the seed. When the seed is growing, is in the Qose Saud, and is giving its yom for all those leaves and, and stem which is making, and any new thing is coming is in Qose Saud. But at the same time, what is happening? Gradually it's making an orange as a fruit. Inside that orange fruit, it's making seeds again. So for those seeds, those seeds are in Layl. The tree itself is in Yom. I know I couldn't make it well understood. Make sense? al yeah. makes sense? Anything which comes in the a slope of Qawse Saud, in the descending arc, descending arc, Nuzul. sorry, Qawse Nuzul, sorry. Anything which is coming from top to bottom, being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Allah wants to, let's say Allah wants to create an orange tree. What, what do we need? He doesn't create the orange tree, just you go and say, this is the orange tree. The orange tree comes in a seed, it's inside this, that seed. That process, that, or, that orange tree is being made as a potential in this seed, that is the process of layl. So basically layl means what? Qosas nuzul. No, no, so, so nozul. Okay. Sorry, I, I, may, I always confuse these two words when I say Qose nozul. You please correct me. Descending arc, descending arc. Then that seed, orange tree as a tree is being made in that seed. When Allah is Allah is making it in that process, that is the process of layl is coming down 
because it is being manifested from higher avolim. It was from in alam aq, then it became to alam khiyal, then it became to alam matter. That is, is coming in the a process of layl. But when it's put under the earth and it's not going, coming out as becoming a tree, that is, it is in Qosis Saud. That is yawm for it. Yawm and layl. So, he says salawat. So when we say, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil ghadr, maybe only, maybe only one meaning of it is Allah says, I send Quran, descended Quran, in and at a night. But definitely that, definitely that is the lowest way, version of meaning. When I say lowest, means, a level equal in the alam, in the universe of matter. But knowing that time has got a higher reality and there are different mazahir, different displays of time, knowing that, then we can imagine that there are different layali al qad. Layali al qad are different days. There can be every, any day of 365 days of the year can be a laylatul qad, basically. But when it comes to the Prophet, وسلم, it happened in those. One of those three nights that we don't know which night it is exactly, precisely. So, another version of it is, another meaning of it is, we descended Quran in descending ark, in Laylatul Qadr. So that means, it, was, it is basically, we all know, we must have heard this very... Uh, often, if you have read about it, that I think even Imam Ali alayhi salam says that Allah, I don't remember 